What's up guys, Chasing Lamey here, coming to you definitely live from outside the county ground in Swindon and not just in front of a shit virtual green screen. Welcome to the new series, we're going to be taking over Swindon Town, this is the Robins Revival. Let's get them back up the leagues, like and subscribe, we're going to go straight into it. What's up guys, Chasing Lamey here, welcome to episode number one of the Robins Revival and as you can see we are on our first day in charge of Swindon Town. I'm going to do a little bit of an introducing you around the club thing, we're not going to worry too much about all of the emails and stuff that have come in. The most important thing is that we are under a transfer embargo until the 1st of June 2022 so we cannot sign any players at all this season that's no free transfers no loans no nothing we cannot do anything however that doesn't mean all is lost let's not consider all to be lost we have a good squad here and we're actually not in an awful position so financially speaking we have 409k in the bank we had a takeover in the summer which is why that's going on also apologies if you can hear a lot of traffic noise in the background i've moved house as you can see um, for those of you who are new to the channel, you won't see, but those of you who've been around a while, moved house, and sometimes it gets noisy and I try and get rid of as much as I can, but if you hear a siren or something, there's a police station next door. Anywho, the projection, we're on course to actually make some money, which is something that I'm quite pleased with. I'm not going to complain about being on course to make some money. Luckily, you know, I can't sign any players and destroy the wage budget, which is good, because the current wage budget, we are spending £40,000 a week. Our budget is also £40,000 a week. That's all pretty good. I'm going to do a quick intro to the squad, and then, you know, we'll get into a game, because we may as well start the season in episode one. Our first game will be against Scunthorpe United, and we'll play that at the end of this episode. Do stick around. I'm hoping we can start off with a win. But in the meantime, I just want to get you introduced to some of the key players that we're going to be using this season, and then we'll get and play some football. Why not? So first up is probably our first choice goalkeeper for the year. There's not much to tell between our two keepers. This is Joe Wallacott, otherwise known as Jojo Wallacott, otherwise just known as Jojo the Hero. Ghanaian actually international, despite the fact in the game he hasn't got any caps, he did go to the African Cup of Nations this season. You can see we signed him from Bristol City in the summer. He has had some time. Very noisy car going past. I've really got to get that window fixed. Anyway, <laughs> love when a plan comes together. Shouldn't record during the daytime. It's fairly quiet at night. Anyway, he joined us from Bristol City, our arch rivals. We had a lot of spells on loan at places like Forest Green, at Gloucester, Truro, Woking, Bath. He's been around. He is actually a pretty good goalkeeper. As we can see from all of his stats here, I haven't got the little Watsy thing, the polygon up, because I don't understand them, never have, never will. But he's a good-looking goalkeeper, and his backup, uh, Lewis Ward, signed for us from Portsmouth the previous year. Again, a player who's had a lot of low moves and not really a lot of football at this level, I guess. Had a season at Exeter, had seasons at Reading, apparently. Started at Reading, there we go. That's how much I've been paying attention, but Lewis Ward's the backup, and he's not actually that bad either. So those are our two goalkeepers for the season, and hopefully they don't both get injured at the same time, or we could be in some trouble. Now in terms of the rest of what I would anticipate being our first team, is right back Kane Kessler-Hayden. He's on loan to us from Aston Villa, which is where Swindon fans realise I'm not playing with the update. I started this save with the game when it was brand new out. Kessler Hayden has left us since then in real life, but I wanted to start from the start of the season where we were in real life because I think that's probably the best way to go. Kessler Hayden, really good right back, really quick. He's actually a, down as being primarily a winger on game. You can see he's a solid, solid wing back, really strong player, 18 years old. I'd like to keep him longer than we did in real life because I think he's a real talent and that pace is really going to help us this season. 
At left back, we're going to be mostly seeing Ellis Ayandolo. He's a bit of a club hero. He's been with us since he was a kid. Honestly, been around for I don't know how much he's going to develop over the years, but he should be our first choice left back. He usually is in real life, as one of the sirens I talked about just kicks off. Although we do also have Rob Hunt, who can play at left back. He's very good. He's been with us for a long time. Now. He joined us from Oldham in 2019. That's how long he's been with us. Again, solid player, really solid backup. Might play at left back more often than not, but he is a right back by trade, so we'll try and keep him there. As centre half, I'd expect to see Akin Odemayo, last year's player of the season. We signed him from Reading. He had a couple of loan spells at Hungerford and Waterford in his time with us. But he's a really good centre half, quite solid, very, very fast, very strong for this level. A lot of potential could be around for a while, so keep an eye out for Akin Odemayo. Alongside him on loan from Huddersfield is Romani Critchlow, another really good centre-half, quite quick, good in the air. For this level, really good all-rounder as a ball-playing defender, and that might be how I use him. I need to have some time to take a look at our tactics to see how things look. He's had a lot of loan spells in his career, this guy. He's been at Huddersfield since he was a kid, essentially, but he has also been on loan at Bradford Park Avenue, at Hartlepool and at Welling. So he's got some first-team football under his belt, but he had a season with us, or he's had a good season with us up until, again, <laughs> found his way out the door. But, you know, he's going to be good for us this season. I've got a lot of faith in him. And I'll back up, and it really pains me saying, it's, saying this backup thing about Dion Connery. He is the club captain. He's been with us now since 2016. He joined us from Chelsea. Had a really good uh, loan spell initially, I th if I remember rightly, but came to us for 50k. He's had a lot of good seasons with us. Always looked like he had a lot of potential, but never really seemed like he was going to reach it. It's very, he's a very confusing player. If we can get his pace up, he might be of value to us. But at the moment, he is just back up. And the other backup at centre half is Matthew Beaudry, 33 years old. He's very much a backup. He joined us from Milton Keynes two, three seasons ago. And honestly, backup. Backup is, I can't sell him. If I could sell him, I would do, but I can't replace him. Expect him to appear only if there's an injury crisis. I've never really been a fan of him, so don't expect him to be making any big waves for us. In the centre of midfield, you can expect to see a lot of Jordan Lydon. Australian under-20 international. He's never been capped by the first team, which always strikes me as being odd, but he's had quite an interesting career as a defensive midfielder, ball-winning midfielder. Came through Villa's youth system, has actually played in the Premier League for Villa, had a season on loan for Oldham, then came and joined us on a free at the start of the 1920 season. At this point in game, 35 games for us, a single goal, but I think actually he's going to be a really important part of this team. You can see he is actually quite good as a ball-winning midfielder for this level, and I expect that to carry us through. However, we also have in centre midfield John Yester, 28 caps for Wales, a career that is mind-boggling. When he signed for Swindon, I don't know how we signed him. It's, he is known for being a winger. I will be playing him in centre mid, I suspect. But look at this history. He's played for Cardiff, he's played for Charlton, for Crystal Palace, for Sunderland. I think two spells at Sunderland? Or did I re-sign him for Sunderland last season? I can't remember. But Palace, Ipswich, MK Dons, Forest. This guy's been everywhere. He also played in the Euros for Wales and was actually pretty good. When he signed for Swindon, I was absolutely gobsmacked. But expect, I know he's 27, he's coming towards the end of his career, I suppose expect me to build the team around him for the foreseeable future. You'll also find in the centre of midfield occasionally Lewis Reed, who joined us from Peterborough. He's had a really interesting career. Another, another good defensive midfielder, more of a playmaker than a ball winner. But he had a few years at Peterborough, a year at Chesterfield, started his career at Sheffield United. He's been around and he's genuinely a very good footballer. The team we've got to start with isn't so bad and doesn't make me worry that much about not having anyone to buy at the moment. Now, why one of our big hitters who can play in the centre as well, he'll move around a little bit and he'll have to because of his versatility, is Ben Gladwin. He's currently on his third spell with the club, if memory... I mean, yeah, third... <laughs> fourth spell with the club, actually, when you get into it. So we signed him all the way back in 2013 from Marlow. actually came through the youth system at Reading. We sold him to QPR for three and a half million. They loaned him back to us, then to Bristol City, 
then back to us again. Then they sold him to Blackburn for 325k. Had a lot of injuries at Blackburn, never really quite made it there. Free transfer to Milton Keynes Dons, where he spent a couple of seasons, paid, played 35 games, rejoined us at the start of this season. Frankly, if we can keep him fit, I'm very, very happy to have Ben Gladwin around. He's good on both sides, he's good in midfield, he can attack, he can do a little bit of defending. Genuinely, Ben Gladwin, one of the best players in this squad, and if we can get the best out of him, will probably lead us on a promotion charge this year. Another midfielder you can expect to see a lot of for us is Jack Payne. He's a winger, he's a central midfielder, he can play everywhere, he can do it all, can Jack Payne. He signed for us on a free the start of the 2020-21 season. 43 appearances, 4 goals, previously played for Lincoln, loans at Bradford City, at Oxford, at Blackburn, 600k moved to Huddersfield after some time at Southend. This guy's had a pretty solid career before he joined us, and he's going to have a pretty solid career with us. Now here's a guy who's going to be a bit versatile, we're going to try and turn him into a striker he actually plays as in real life, because this man is a goal machine, a real life goal machine. Harry McCurdy, what a player. I don't mind admitting... I'm a little bit in love with Harry McCurdy, and I want him to have my babies. Harry McCurdy, what a legend. Filler youth teamer. Spells at Stevenage and at Crewe. He's got some goals wherever he's been. Loaded at Newport County. Free transfer to Carlisle, where he never really settled, but five goals in 28 at League 2 level. Eight appearances for Port Vale in 2021. He's joined us on a free this summer, but we are going to try and turn him into the striker he should be, that he can be. He's a goal machine when he gets them, when he gets going in real life. And if I can turn him into a goal machine here, we're going to be golden. And then up top, as our first choice striker, according to our assistant manager, is Jaden Mitchell Lawson, who is a youth teamer, or was a youth teamer. So he came through with us. He joined Derby, and there was some kind of messing around with a fee I don't fully remember the full details of. Had a couple of loan spells at Bristol Rovers. He's rejoined Swindon on a free for this season. I really want to see if I can get some good performance out. We don't really have, apparently, an out-and-out -out striker in the squad, which is somewhat disappointing. And I don't really understand why, but we'll, we'll get into that when we need to. We just need to find some goals. If we can use his pace, we'll get some goals out of him. I, mean, I say we don't have an out-and-out -out striker, but we do have Tyree Simpson on loan from Ipswich. He was really good for us in real life at the start of the season, so I shouldn't hate on him too much. We'll see if we can build something around him. I really want Tyree Simpson to do well. He came to us on loan, left in January after scoring just a ridiculous amount of goals. So we'll hope for the best out of him. We've also got another striking option, Alex Gilbert, on loan from Brentford. I don't think he's that good either in-game or in real life. He can apparently play as a striker. He is an Irish under-21 international. Came through West Brom's youth. Maybe he's got something to him, but I don't know if we're going to see it. And the final regular first team is more of the backup brigade because for some reason the game, I don't know if this is something with the research or with the game, the game doesn't recognise him as being an actual out-and-out -out centre midfielder. He can actually do it very well. Anthony Grant, the general, the general is a hero at Swindon Town. I cannot stress this enough how much of a hero the general is at Swindon Town. He is a Jamaican international, became a Jamaican international like, at 34, it's ridiculous. And he's always played well for Jamaica when he's got on international duty. He has had just a career. Just a career to talk about. Came through at Chelsea. No one really knew what was going on. Had some loans at Wickham, Oldham, Luton. Finally joined Southend. Had some good years at Southend. Then Stevenage, Crewe, Port Vale, Peterborough, Shrewsbury... Finally joined us on loan in 1920, and then we finally signed up at the end of that season. And phew, what a player. What a player. He has had, what, 63 league games for us and always looked good. 540 games in his career. This guy is a proper, true-born leader. I don't know how much he'll play for us because he's getting on a bit in years, but we'll try and get something out of him. We've also got Ryan East that can play as a defensive midfielder who should be as a central midfielder. I don't fully understand what that's about. He joined us on loan, or joined us permanently from Reading after being released by them after only playing once. But I think he's got some potential and we'll see what we can do with that. But otherwise, the backup brigade is actually pretty, pretty sad for us. I mean, we've got Ricky Aguiar who might have some potential. He was he came for us from Worthing after play, playing for them 30-odd times and was it the... Ishmian Premier. 
I don't know how much potential this kid's got or how, what we're going to do with him. I don't know how he fits into my plans, but I can't get rid of him and I can't really do anything with him because I need those extra bodies in the squad. Same with Harrison Minton, a centre-half, came through the youth team. I don't know if he's going to make it. He's kind of sixth choice, I guess, as centre-half at best. And there's probably some defensive midfielders, including the general I'd put there before him, if I'm quite honest. But we've got Harrison Minton kicking about. And the youth team just show how really dire the situation is with backup. We've got Mo Dabra, Abracadabra, Mo Dabra, the magician. He apparently has got some big potential. A lot of people, fans of the club, people at the club, see a lot of potential in Mo Dabra. And I'd like to see if we can realise it. He won't play at all this season, the Frenchman, I guarantee it. But, you know, it's nice to have him around. We'll see if he develops. We've got Harry Parsons, another striker who was given a good contract at the start of the season. I don't know how long I'm going to keep him around once I can sign players. But he might develop. You'll probably see him from time to time. Same with Callum Winchcombe, central midfielder who is only going to play if everyone else is dead, but apparently has some big potential. So we'll keep him around. We'll see if he develops into. We've got George Cowmeadow, who, again, sixth choice striker. Maybe some potential, but I don't think we're going to see much out of him either. And then it's Levi Francis, a left wing back. I'm never going to use him as a left wing back. If we can turn him into a respectable left back, he might get some games this season. But I don't think he's going to stay once I can sign some players. Same with Donnell Gordon. He's a right back slash right mid, very much in the Kane Kessler Hayden mould. He's got some pace, but he's going to have to really, really develop for us to actually keep him around long term. But that is the full squad. I'll show you it in full squad, no filters view. That is every single player we have at this squad. And it's not terribly impressive overall. I'd like more depth. We'll get there once we can do some transfers at the end of the season. But for now, stick around. We're going to do a little bit of a jump cut and we're going to go and play Scunthorpe and see what happens. And we're back. So, what did you miss? That's the big question that will, of course, change. There, you've missed nothing, honestly. You've missed pre-season. I signed some staff. There were some games that happened that were all friendlies. It's not been a great pre-season, I'll be honest. It's been lots of those uh, awful red dots and one green one. It's not... <laughs> pre-season has not gone well. I'm not going to pretend it has as long as the players come in match fit. I think I'll survive. We'll get over it. It'll be fine, right? Otherwise, though, when you're... because I can't sign any players, one thing I've been spending some time doing in this pre-season, actually, is if we look at the scout assignments... Is that what we look for them? A scouted players, right. Scouted players, that's what we're doing. You can see I've scouted like a bunch of players. So many players. The whole logic here is that I've scouted every single player in the Premier League and the Championship, as well as at Rangers and Celtic and all the local clubs, whose contracts are running down. Because at the end of the season, I'll be able to sign players. I want to be able to sign players. The more players I know about, the better choices I make, basically. So while I can't sign anyone, I can scout people. And that's kind of what I'm thinking. That's kind of our whole process here. But without any further ado, let's get into the game. Because otherwise, we're just going to sit here waffling all day. We'll do the little tactical meeting. It should be fine. I'll deal with that in just a second, actually, because that's actually quite important. Bear with me two seconds. Okay, so the starting line, first of all, don't be freaked out by this formation. I know it's really tempting to be freaked out by this formation. Don't be. It's fine. Everything here makes sense to me. So we've got Wallacott and Goal playing as kind of a sweeper keeper, which is kind of to make up for the fact that Kane Kessler Hayden is playing as a complete wing back, which means he's going to spend more time up here than he does back here. Basically, Wallacott is doubling up as an extra man at the back. Conroy and Critchlow are just defending. Hunt is at left back, just doing his little fullback thing, it's fine. In midfield, we've Gladwin coming as an inside winger, so he's going to kind of cut inside, which brings him onto his right foot and takes advantage of the fact that he's actually a really, really, well, really good at shooting from distance. So hopefully, we'll bring him inside here and he'll start cracking off a few shots. Williams is, of course, the playmaker. He's by far the best player in the team, so he's going to be the playmaker. Reed alongside him is there just to win the ball back. McCurdy is playing as an inside forward. Now, the attacking thing makes sense here. I know it's a weird shape, but basically Mitchell Lawson is playing as the false nine. So Mitchell Lawson's whole thing is going to be kind of he drops back here and hopefully brings some defenders with him. Hopefully brings a centre-half or two with him. 
which gives Payne room to run inside and McCurdy time to kind of cut inside and form that second striker. So basically our strike partnership is McCurdy and Payne, and Mitchell Lawson's just kind of there as a decoy, which is partially because he can do it, and partially because he's just not that good. So <laughs> that's kind of my thinking there. We'll see how it plays out. Let's get into the game and let's see if we can get a win against Scunthorpe on day one of the season. So we're in the dressing room with our lovely barter card cheese and onion crisp flavour shirts. We're playing away today. I want to be impressed today. Yeah, that's a fair. I want to be impressed. Let's not put too much pressure on them on day one. Let's just see if we can get a, get a win, get a good performance out of them. We're going to go into the game straight away and I'm hoping we're going to get a good performance here. Kickoffs, kickoff highlight is always worrying, and it's Davis on the ball for Scunthorpe to Perry. Back to Davis. Davis picks it up and plays it to Honorise, or Honoriase, I don't know. Millen to Hackney now. Hackney with the ball four. Green is going to get there, but Hunt is in for the header. Puts out to touch, and hopefully that will alleviate a little bit of pressure on us. I've just, just occurred to me, I should make sure that we're on the right highlight setting, because... I don't play pre-season friendlies, and let's be honest, neither do any of you. It's just not worth it. We'll do that. We'll get that set up. Let's get on with the game. So we're half an hour in, and we've got another highlight. Taft throws it to Perry for Scunthorpe, to Kenyon. Back to Taft. Ball back to Davis, and we've got to find something just useful here. Kessler Hayden heads it back to Wallacott. Wallacott to Conroy. Conroy to Reed. Reed back to Wallacott. Keeping the ball nicely. We're playing the Gagan press, but there's a lot of short passing involved in this. It's kind of very keep ball, very controlled possession. We've had five shots so far. None of them on target. We've had five shots. It's Gladwin. Picks up on the left-hand side. Flicks it back inside for Payne. It's a little bit behind him, but he gets there. Payne to McCurdy. McCurdy out to Kessler Hayden. Kessler Hayden to Reed to Williams. Is Williams going to have a pop? He's not. Reed. Reed back to Payne. Payne to Williams. Williams to Gladwin. Gladwin cuts onto his right and has a pop. And that's... That's why I put him as an in, as an inverted winger. It didn't quite come off that time, but that was kind of what I was going for. So the theory is working, just not the practice. As Williams gets a corner for us now, puts it into the box. Kenyon heads it away, and there's nobody there. Will Hunt get there? He should be first to the ball, and he is to Critchlow. Critchlow back to Hunt. Hunt, Williams. Williams to Payne. Payne into Gladwin. Gladwin turns. Mitchell Lawson plays it out wide for Kessler Hayden. Can he get a cross in? There's lots of people in the box. Cuts it back for McCurdy. Back to Kessler into the box and Taft gets rid of it. It's a bit wasteful. Loft heads it on and Critchlow will pick it up here. And hopefully we can slow the pace down, kind of get them back into our rhythm. Hunt to Gladwin, to Williams. Williams over the top looking for Mitchell Lawson. Mitchell Lawson could be through here. Mitchell Lawson puts it wide. And it was so close, but so far. And we're dominating on XG, but it's just, just not looking like we're going to score just yet. And that brings us to half time, and with with a better side, I switched things up so we'd be playing a positive mentality. It felt like the way to go. We'll go into the dressing room. We'll see if we can kind of spur some interest in getting a goal. I don't like what I saw from this team. is very accurate. So anyway, I'm not going to do like positional shouts so much, but we are going to tell Jack Payne that he needs to kind of wake up because, frankly, he's been kind of mediocre. Everyone else has been okay. But Jack Payne's been kind of mediocre. I can rearrange things, I can reshuffle things, but I'd rather he just did what he's told the first time. So we're about 65 minutes in, and I've been desperately hoping Jack Payne will get him. Don't worry, he's done that. Desperately hoping Jack Payne will get himself, himself involved in this match, and he's not quite done it yet. So I'm going to have a little look and see what we can do here. I think maybe we can move Mitchell Lawson back into that attacking midfielder position. Or maybe out wide, actually. He can replace McCurdy out wide. That probably feels smarter. We're going to put Jack Payne, or take Jack Payne off. We're going to send Tyrese Simpson. He's not going to play as a false nine, because he can't do it. We're going to use him as a pressing forward. We're going to use him as a pressing forward on attack. Because I think that's going to mean he gets on the end of stuff from Kessler Hayden a bit more. Might create some stuff. We'll keep an eye on McCurdy, because he's not having the game of his life. And I've got options. But for now, we'll just go with that. We'll see if that takes us any further forward. Hopefully that'll be the catalyst to get us a goal from somewhere. Hopefully. Williams now on the ball. We've got a highlight. Come on, Noah. McCurdy out to Kessler Hayden. And Kessler Hayden put the ball onto Simpson's head. He has a go. Davis heads it clear. Williams down to Reed. Reed back to Williams. Williams to Critchlow and back to Williams. Williams to Gladwin. Ben Gladwin. Tyreek Simpson. 
Oh, Tyree Simpson gets himself a goal and we are 1-0 up. And maybe the idea of using Simpson as the striker was a slightly wiser one than trying to make Mitchell Lawson into something he's probably not. Great play, though. And Gladwin gets the assist, which I'm really happy to see. McCurdy, by the way, now I've put him as the attacking centre mid, isn't actually doing much to influence the game, which is a bit disappointing, but hopefully we'll see something else. Williams gets a great interception there, and Critchlow will pick up the ball. What can Critchlow do here? Gets the ball across to Reed. Reed has plenty of time and space. Williams to Gladwin. Gladwin turns his man and kind of doesn't decide what to do with it properly. Gladwin down the wing. Back towards Hunt. Hunt to Williams. Williams puts it over the top looking for Simpson and Mitchell Lawson off the post. It was offside anyway, but, you know, we're starting to open up by 15 shots on goal, 4 on target. We're absolutely all over them. I do need to look at some subs though, so maybe we should do that just before we go any further. Let's, uh, let's pause the game, otherwise we'll, we'll lose track of where we are. McCurdy... Isn't really has McCurdy got a better role here? Because I don't really want to take out because I as I've said I am a little bit in love with Harold. Let's play him as a shadow striker. We'll make him into the shadow striker, that's fine. We're gonna swap Kessler Hayden and Hunt because Kessler Hayden's a little bit tired, and we can send Ellis Iandolo in. I think I'm gonna hold back that last sub just in case McCurdy doesn't feel like being a footballer today. But I don't I don't wanna I don't wanna start hating Harry McCurdy. I've chosen so badly here. Hopefully McCurdy will get himself a goal. If not, we'll stick Gladwin up there. We've got options. We can reshuffle the pack a little bit. It's not a huge drama, but I'd like us to see just something else happen, really. Throw in now for Scunthorpe. I sent on Leiden in midfield for Williams, just because Williams was looking very tired. Reed, Taft, though, he picks up the ball. Davis, Davis back to Taft. Taft just not being closed down enough, if we're honest. O'Neill, we're going to concede here. I can feel it already. O'Neill, ball goes across, headed across, Hallam's there, Wallacott makes the save, the ball goes out for a corner, four minutes added on, it's a corner to Scunthorpe here and we really need to just get rid of this and try and make something happen. Wallacott picks up the ball from the header and we're not going to see any more highlights, frankly I don't want to see any more highlights from this game, I'd just like us to run down the clock, call it a day, 1-0 will do us for the opening day of the season, it's a perfectly respectable way for the season to start. And we've managed to pull it off. And that's looking pretty good as things go. Simpson gets the man of the match, which is pretty impressive for a guy that only played about, what, 25 minutes? <laughs> good stuff. Came on, made the difference. That's what we like to see. So, nice work, everyone. That was very good. Sure, we'll praise them. Why not? I'm not sure it was the best performance I've ever seen. But it did look good in that second half. We were starting to come together. I want to get more out of McCurdy next time around. And I certainly want to see more from him over the course of this season. But that's fine. I'm not going to bore you guys with the emails. But basically my plan is we're going to make this quite quick this season. Because there's no transfer news. There's really all I can do other than try and get as far as I can in the Cups. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to do like a, a skip eight and play it. And that conveniently, looking at the fixture list, means it's a local derby against Bristol Rovers. Oh, I hate Bristol Rovers, so that's going to be beautiful. Anyway, guys, I'm going to leave it there. I've, I'm not going to switch to a fancy intro or outro screen anymore. I've kind of given up on the idea because I can stick all the stuff up on the screen here as I need to. So that's a, that's a thing, I guess. Anyway, guys, um, yeah, let's just do that. Thanks for watching, guys. I don't know what this is going on with the fuzzy stuff in the background behind me. It is just a... Actually, I do know what's going on with that. It's fine. It's fine. I've, I've left the green screen. The, the background of that. Is, the background of that is green. But that's. I'll shut up before I go because why not? If I take off the the chroma key, there you go. You can see it's green. It's just. I've just confused it. I've just. Anyway, guys, like and subscribe. I'll see you next time for Bristol Rovers, and hopefully we'll be doing something else. Until next time, I've been chasing lamely. Have a good one.